What's up? This is Aditya. I'm back again with a new Hadoop tutorial for my channel, Learn Hadoop the Best Way. I'm I really I'm really sorry, you know, I didn't post any video for the past two years because of some other things going in my life, right? But um, I'm back again with the new video and a new new videos actually. And then I want to, you know, again start sharing my knowledge you know, on the Hadoop ecosystem and would love to show you some real-time practical examples, you know, how things actually are doing in the real-time scenarios and how people are using Hadoop in the real-time and the company ecosystems. So, uh, la last time I remember is uh, where I left off was uh, data migration from a relational database to the Hadoop ecosystem using Scoop. Uh, the Hadoop ecosystem was Cloudera. So, it was pretty pretty much simple, you know, where I was actually, you know, writing some scoop scripts, you know, based on data import and then it would just import data to to the relation, uh, to the SDFS and you can check that on my channel and learn the best way. So, I'm going to post this video on that channel and then I'm going to, you'll probably see that video on that channel as well if you go, you know, it's, it should be in the link somewhere. So, uh, but this time, so we have done that, you know, this time I'm using my own Hadoop ecosystem. So, I have set up my own cluster of Hadoop on my MacBook uh, because um, you know, so recently the sandbox have um, you know increased their demand for you know for for RAM. So my RAM is 8 GB, and they they want at least 12 GB RAM to 16 GB RAM, which can be a little costly for people who already are using 8 GB RAM, you know, to upgrade to that level. And some companies like Apple, they don't even upgrade your you need know, you just have to buy a new machine, or either you know have to go to a local vendor and update your software. So update your RAM, sorry. So what you can do is, uh, so th that's the best way I could find out, you know, so I have I have my own, you know, Hadoop ecosystem where I'm actually, I'm, you know, you can see that when I do this, you know, you can see the directories which are under that, you know, so it's up and running, you know, I can do a JPS on that and you can see the source manager, node manager, you know, and name node everything. So everything is running on a, it's a, it's a standalone mode, everything is running on the single machine. And, um, you know, how to know that it's running is you can actually go here and then see the local host and then when I refresh it and you can see all those things, utilities, browse file systems and then you can pretty much see the directories under that. So as right now, this is the directory under it and then you can see scoop directory under it and uh, this is the recent one data I got. So that's, you know, that's it says blocks as whatever it is. So, yeah. So, so you pretty much, you know, we have everything same, you know, uh, installing cluster was a big challenge, you know, due to a lot of configuration and stuff like that, but kind of figured out everything at the end. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to upload the data in an incremental way. So what I mean by incremental is, so let's suppose, <clears throat> let's suppose you have this, uh, you know, we, uh, so let's suppose I have a table, you know, this is an orders table, you know, and if I do a select start from orders, if I do a select start from orders, you can see there's, there's a the data there, okay. So let's suppose this table is being inserted with data every day and let's suppose it's done like five times a day six times a day okay and but you put the data in the sdfs like every day on a single day basis so obviously you don't when you put the data into the sdfs directory you don't want the data again to be of the previous day right though the data is in the same table what would people generally would do you know if they want to if they don't use something which is called incremental upload what they end up being is they'll probably, you know, end up migrating all the data again, which is not very cool to do that because obviously it will just take the space of your SDFS, you know, cluster and then there's no use putting the same data again, again, you know. Let's suppose only a single row changes, right? And the data is like 20 GB and only a single row changes, then what? Then again, for one single row, you're going to do update, you're going to update all the data into SDFS? No, right? So that's why um, we have this uh, thing called incremental upload where actually only one the table which is uploaded sorry the table will be uploaded in the relation side on the so let's say on this table um, the data which is uploaded on this table will only be shown into the SDFS directory you know so these values will be left okay so let's quickly so let's suppose my data is there okay so let's, let's quickly do it let's let's I'll show you let's okay uh, all right data and then say test orders or let's say data orders okay 
and then I'm running. So by default, Hadoop uh, by default scoop runs four mappers, but for that you have to use spread by so that you know it can divide, but in equal places. But we won't use that here. So that's it. You know, password is. So this is you know this command. Everyone knows this command. Uh, scoop importing data. You know, connecting to JDBC. You know, so scoop is also in my ecosystem. Okay, so I'm just everything is there. And then uh, this is the database name. Okay, this is the root and then password of my you know my MySQL database. And then this is the uh, access is root. The table which I'm importing is orders. And then target directory is where I'm storing the data. And the number of mappers I'm running is one. So let's. Let's run it, okay? Let's see what happens. So I think job is triggered, everything is triggered. It was very interesting to, you know, download all those technology in your system and configure it. It was a little pain, but at the end when everything was working, it was really, you know, amazing to see how you can actually still use what you love, you know, your ecosystem and everything based on the ecosystem requirements and don't have to depend on those sandboxes which are actually present on the internet, you know, like Cloudair and Hortonworks, they have really nice services, but, you know, it's not compatible, so, you know, I'm going to do my own stuff. And uh, so now the data is here, let's quickly look at it. Okay, so we'll do Hadoop FS minus LS and then we'll just look for the directory users and we'll see, okay, okay, we'll see now like that. Let's see. So this is data orders. Okay, so let's let's go in data orders. Okay, and then just do a cat. Okay, sorry. There should be something like this. I'm really sorry about that. So this is the one. Okay, so we're gonna write that name part. So this is the map reduce job which was run recently and we're gonna look into it what's happening over there so okay so now you see all the data is here right okay and this data is similar to the data here right and we already we everyone knows you know in, the, in my last videos i've shown how, how this is happening but long story short the data is here okay so let's suppose if i upload one only one okay so if I'm doing insert into okay, insert into and then table or us, you know, values my bad orders values and then let's suppose eight thousand two okay and then purchase amount let's suppose one two three point three four okay and then date is let's suppose um two thousand thirteen zero nine zero two eight okay two eight let's let's do that okay and then so for date i'm using single quotes just to let you know single you know like this is this for quotes like single uh column no single uh inverted commas customer id three thousand uh, let's suppose this and then you can say sales on id is like let's suppose we put five thousand five okay so this is pretty much you know and then when i insert it you know so if 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 i'm going to select orders you can see, probably see the last added the last row in the table orders so now we only want this okay we don't want entire data you know so let's let's see how that works so what was so this is the statement see what was the last so what the last was 8001 so what we'll do here we'll probably just change it to 8001 and i explained what's happening here is it's actually uh, so same scoop command you know import scoop import connect to JDBC MySQL same it's doing you know 3306 everyone knows is port number from MySQL SQL prep is the database where the, my table resides the orders table username root password for my you know my, my MySQL database table name is orders target directory is so I have to change the target directory I can uh, uh, I don't need, but uh, I mean, let's say append, right? So data append, let's say append. And then number of mapper is one. So incremental is the keyword which actually will tell the scoop job that, okay, that this append, this thing is incremental now. And then we are appending it. We are appending it, okay? We are not getting everything. And then check column, 
is the column which which column we are checking so it's order number so here here actually the order number we are checking because that's where we have uploaded the id order number so that's where it check for the last value and then last value is the keyword we will check for the last value so now what will happen is it will only give us the last value so let's see what happens It's a little while. You guys can have a coffee or tea in the meantime. <laughs> so, okay, map produce job has started now. Right now, it's running the map phase. So, let's. Okay, okay. Cool. So, see, she has retrieved one record. Now, let's quickly go in the directory and let's check what's happening there. So, Okay. So data orders, right? So data orders is the directory. Okay, and then it's does it have data in there? Yeah, it has. It does. And then part M. Okay. Sorry, is your data pen? I, my mistake. I'm really sorry about that. Data pen. Okay. So see, now you can see only one data is there. Okay. So why? What's the benefit of this? Let's suppose you're writing a hive table, right? And then you want to upload the data somewhere, right? Or you know, someone else wants to. So you can still do just an insert there, you know, and then you can actually get the data, you know, or anything which, I mean, it can be used anywhere, you know, it doesn't depend on the hive table, let's suppose you're using some other, other stuff where you need the data which has to be incremental. So that's where, you know, so you can actually make the new directory, whatever it is, and then you can just put your data there. So, so guys, yeah, do, do let me know what kind of Hadoop videos, you know, you want to see in the future. I was thinking to do something based on Kafka as well. That's really in demand right now. And um, so I, I received comments on my videos on the past comments, just do something with like a Java map reduce job. And so I, I can run that, I can do that too. I can actually show you in both in Eclipse, in a, that's a standalone mode without involvement of a Hadoop ecosystem and on Hadoop ecosystem as well, you know, on Hadoop cluster as well, you know. So I'm going to post this video and you know, do let me know, you know, please subscribe to my channel and then do let me know what you guys think, what things you want me to do more in the future on what kind of technology so do let me know and then yeah we'll just go from there thanks a lot really appreciate that